The following program is video supplemental instruction. VSI is brought to you by the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu. Okay, problem nine says, uh, problem is oscillating vertically up and down with an amplitude A equals 0.4 meters. A block of mass M equals two kilograms sits on the platform but is not attached to it. The angular frequency omega starts out small and slowly increases. For what value of omega does the block start to bounce on the platform? Give the answer in units of rating per second. So basically what we have is a system in which we have a platform that's oscillating back and forth at a certain amplitude and it's going to keep oscillating and increasing uh, frequencies, basically. So I'm just going to take a look at what it looks like. Hopefully you guys can see that the amplitude, it's going, if the block's going to start bouncing, it's going to be pretty much at the top. And it's because of the bottom, it's, ever, it's not going to bounce. Because no matter how fast it's going, it's going to change in direction. It's going to increase the normal force in the block. And the block's going to feel really heavy on the bottom, but it would never fall off. It's going to fall off from the top. So what we're going to be looking at is the top at the amplitude. Now they tell us the block has a mass equal to 2 kilograms. We have an amplitude equal to 0 0.4. That's going to occur both ways. And that's uh, all they give us, actually. Now what we do have to realize is what's going on up here is basically the block's going to leave the platform due to the fact that as omega increases and it goes faster and faster, the uh, acceleration is going to increase, going downwards. And at a certain point, the acceleration downwards at this top part is going to be so great that the normal force of the block goes to zero and it ends up rising because gravity can't compensate for how quick the, uh, this thing is accelerating downwards via platform. So when Basically, when the platform accelerates down, it's faster than gravity, then that's going to be our answer. So, whenever you have something that's about to fall off, like in your roller coaster problems, that's when the normal force, which is normally there, equals zero. That's at the very point where it's going to start to rise off the platform. We also always have our force of gravity pulling us downwards. Okay? So, our force equation is basically going to state that we assume up is positive, that our negative mg is going to be equal to our negative ma. Now I'm putting a negative there because at this point, the acceleration is downwards. Okay? You guys should uh, remember that basically when you have the spring, a block attached to a spring that's going back and forth, At this point right here, first off, you're going to have your maximum acceleration. At this point here, your spring's in equilibrium, therefore it has no acceleration. Over here, at the amplitude, you're going to have your maximum force of the spring, therefore your maximum acceleration. Nothing's going to be different in pretty much any oscillating system. That's where your max acceleration is going to be, is going to be at your amplitude. And the acceleration is going to be pointing towards the direction it's moving. It's going to be accelerating downwards. So we have to have a negative for that because our acceleration points downwards, as well as our force vector due to gravity points downwards. So when we cancel out those negatives, if you had just assigned positive as down, that would have been just as fine. You get the same exact equation. It doesn't matter what direction your frame of reference points. So we can tell that um, basically gravity is going to be equal when our when gravity is equal to our acceleration. That's when it's going to happen. However, we're not concerned about our acceleration, we're actually concerned about the angular frequency. So we need to change these units, or we need to basically change the variables around. Now, in your oscillations, they uh, give you a formula, or I believe they give you the formula, and if not, you can derive it. But basically, the formula states that um, your acceleration is going to be equal to your, amp your angular frequency times your amplitude. If you don't have that formula, you should definitely write it down. Uh, furthermore, V is equal to omega times your amplitude, and of course your amplitude is your amplitude. It comes from the trigonometric formulas for uh, oscillations. So this is our 
maximum acceleration any point occurs when omega squared occurs at omega squared times a. So we can go to this equation and say that g now, plug this guy in right there for him, is equal to omega squared a. Okay? With that in mind, we can just solve for omega by saying omega is going to be the square root of g over a, just by dividing your amplitude over and then taking the square root. Since we know what g is, once again, they used pen and this if you use 9.8, that's perfectly fine. You'll get an answer that's almost exactly the same, but they like to use 10 over our amplitude, 0 0.4. So omega is just going to be equal to basically the square root of 25, which is going to be 5, creating per second. And since we use our amplitude in meters, and we use gravity in meters per second squared, we end up getting our answer omega in the correct units of radians per second, which is choice 1. And your correct answer to this problem. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu.